What's up, guys? Welcome to Wally's Welding World. I'm the Well Professor. Let's go ahead and get into this split T. So right here, I go and show you where we're laying out on the UT on the pipe. This is the top of the flange of the split T. You can see there's a flange on it, and then that's where the bevel is that we're going to put them together. There's the bottom. There's the top. There's the bottom. These are the UTV readings to basically make sure that the pipe is thick enough so we're not welding on thin, thin pipe. The helpers have to buff off the paint so that way we can obtain full penetration and not be welding through paint, which will catch basically porosity. Right here, we've already leveled out the flange and tacked it up. You got my ground there. You can see some little tacks going on. And we got the bottom on. We got it tacked up. Right here takes a spacing bar, which is considered a backing strip. So we're going to go ahead and put that backing strip in at this point right now. Kind of get it in the grooves right there and then ease it in there. I had a little trouble, so I had to grab my wedge and smack it the rest of the way in there. Because sometimes it's a tight fit, sometimes it's not. This one was a tight fit. But I ended up getting it in there. It wasn't that tight of a fit. Now that I have it in there, this is what it looks like. At this point now, the helper will take the wire wheel and wire wheel it out. It cleaned off the surface and made it good, and I grabbed some 332s and I took off after it. First welds that we do are the 332s, and that's just to get a good penetration and not burn too hot and burn through that backing strip. I had to pick up my file and knock off the slag because sometimes you can't fire up on that slag. Yeah, I'm using both my hands to make sure I'm getting in that groove because I don't want to arc all over the flange. I finish up here now and I basically let the welder, I mean the helper, <laughs> I'm the welder, I let the helper go ahead and buff all this slag off. You can see that's my 332 pass, took a couple of rods. And then I fire up with some 532s and burn over that 332. I kind of just take my time. You can see how my elbows rested on my my thigh there. That's just kind of helping me keep my arms steady. That's how I like to do it. Not everybody does it like that, but I like to do it like that. And as I sit there, I just kind of, you know, burn the 532s in there and get a nice pass all the way across. 332 is pretty much the rod I would like to use first to go around that just to make sure I'm not blowing too hot through that backing strip. And then I'm, I feel safe enough to burn a 532. Notice over here on the side, it doesn't really show it right now, but once I get to the end I kind of come out of the bevels and then I weld up the pipe a little bit to help build it up on the outside. See it there now? Yeah. Because if you don't, you're just going to leave a big mess over there. Notice right now I kind of I, I just line it up and then I start hitting that slag off. You don't want that slag to pop off and hit you in your eyes because it will happen. It's happened to me before. Again, you can kind of see how we got the T tacked up on the outer side. My buddy down there on the lower end, he's got the hard spot this side. We kind of switch off, off and on so that way one day I get the good side, one day he gets the bad side, and then the next day vice versa. I'll have the bad side and then he'll have the good side. But we have two left and one of us has to take the bad side so today we flipped a coin and I got the bad side. So I'll be doing the hard side tomorrow. But this is the easy side so this was a good demonstration video for you guys to get a kind of a gist of what the split T looks like. Everybody's been asking me what the split T is. Some people are calling it a stoffel, some people are calling it a hat, uh, hot tap. But technically it's a split T. It's not a hot tap until you put the valve and put the drill on it and tap into the line. Yes, it is a live line. There is oil pumping through that line. That's why it's important for the UTV to read it before anything. Because if they don't, if the pipe isn't, uh, you know, if it isn't too thick enough and it's too thin, wore out, they might have to replace the pipe. Now I got two five two five thirty two stacked on top of each other. Somebody calling me. Yep. And that's my cap now. It's so one pass, two pass, three passes with a five thirty two, and then I put a, a three thirty two on to top up. of it. Not the best, but it'll work. The main goal is not to have porosity or undercut. And that is what they're looking for when they come back. Then I take a 1 8 rod and we go ahead and weld up the sides. Let's 
Some people like a 332, some like an 8. Personal preference. I did use 332 on a couple of them, but now I'm feeling confident to run the 1 8 around it, so I'm running the 1 8. I do three passes on the side. First pass with 1 8, then another pass on the bottom of the pipe, and that bead, and then I come back around with another 1 8 and I stack it on top of that bottom one and that and I go along the top of it on the, the T. To finish it out, I'll probably tap it with 332s, which you will see later here in the video that I'm tapping with 332s. Hope you guys are enjoying this little tutorial video that we made today. It, it isn't really like in-depth, but it definitely gives you an idea of what it looks like out there in the field, what we're doing. You can see that we're up in a scaffolding. This one is probably about 20 feet in the air. There's one right below us, but we decided to do the top one first and then go down to the lower one so that way we can get the shade in the morning kind of and then jump down there and get the shade in the afternoon and the evening. Yep. Notice how I started up high and then I dragged it way down. I probably dragged it down about three feet. When lighting a rod, you always want to drag it down and then fire back up and then start going up the pipe. When you're going back up the pipe, you'll burn out anything that you dropped off when you were going down the pipe, just light it up. Basically, the whole point of that is, is when you strike it up top and you drag it down, you're heating up that rod to get a good surface, I mean, so you can get a good hot rod and then a good, nice puddle formulated right before you decide to tie in. Actually, right there, it looks like I'm still running the ace. You can see now I'm stacking it on the bottom of that bead, between that bead and the pipe. And that is the second pass. Looks like he skipped over and we, we missed the third pass and I'm already capping it. My buddy on the other side, you can see, is already capped out on the bottom because it's harder for him right now because the pipe is so close on that side that he runs all three passes up that bottom and then he jumps on top and finishes running those three passes along the top. Now that's only for that side. Me, I go ahead and run mine all the way up from the bottom, then buff it off and come back down and do it again just my style just my preference how I like to do it not everybody's the same if you got comments please leave it in the comments 7018 is the rod I'm using that is a 332 and I'm starting the first pass of my cap which is on the pipe and the bottom of that weld and then I'll stack two more on top of it to complete my weld Helper's trying to zoom in. I think he's trying to get an arc shot. Ain't really working too good for him. But you can see that I kind of swipe it side to side, which is like a zigzag. I make sure when I get to the pipe that I let it spread well onto the pipe so it doesn't undercut it so hard. Kind of sit there for a minute and then rock back over. Now what you should be focused on is the most brightest part of the puddle. The brightest part of the puddle is the metal. The rest is just slag falling off. With the heat and the harness, sometimes it becomes a pain in the butt to try to make a perfect weld. But not all my welds come out perfect. And I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I do my best, but I'm not always the best. Sometimes I can get a good flawless weld, but as you can see here, from the hot, the heat, and everything, and just constantly welding and welding and welding, Man, it might not turn out that good. Let me look over here. I do that side first, and then I come over and I finish out on this side. At this point, I'm pretty exhausted, and I do my best. We won't know how good it is until Dylan, these don't people get no come and tell us that there's no pinholes and that there's no porosity, there's no undercut. But until then, I just got to do the best I can. If you like it, comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks for tuning in.